Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Tsitejo um, Moses Sechaitu from the University of South Africa. I am the executive director for our IT portfolio at the university, but I'm also the secretariat of the newly formed uh, Moodle Moot Africa Association. And we are glad to be here for the first time, I think, in a Moodle Moot uh, conference to represent Africa. So what I'm going, going to be sharing with you is um, an analysis that I did through a survey to determine what different universities in Africa are using to host their Moodle platforms or installations and the different um, service uh, models that they are using for that. If you haven't seen the university, it's just a glimpse of what our university looks like. Um, headquartered in or situated in Pretoria, the capital city of South Africa. Uh, this is just the topic in full. Uh, it's part of my abstract, so if you want to read through it, it's there. I'm not going to read through it. Just the context to the study, because I did a mini study through a survey. So in terms of UNISA as an institution that uh, uses Moodle, uh, we started using Moodle in 2022, January after an implementation that ended in December 2021. We are a university of plus minus on an annual basis, 370,000 students from across the globe, 110 countries. Students obviously from varying demographics, social settings and economic circumstances. Uh, 2,000 plus academics. Uh, in terms of our teaching and learning, over 2 million exam sittings every year. Uh, we have two exam sittings in mid-year and end of the year. Throughout the year, plus minus 50 million assignments, uh, formative, formative assessments. And in terms of the Moodle architecture, we have eight instances of Moodle, one being the big one for teaching and learning and uh, formative assessment. And then the other eight instances are divided per college for summative assessment. Uh, in terms of uh, challenges that we've had since implementing Moodle, is we have big numbers in terms of modules, modules that have up to 20,000, uh, which poses a challenge at the time of, especially assessment time. Uh, when we started, our system could only accommodate uh, between 3,000 and 5,000 uh, students per session, uh, which we've worked on since that time to to try and increase the capacity, uh, increase the stability of the system. We used to have, you know, frequent downtime, uh, database running out of uh, sessions or resources. And the architecture in, in an art shell was not really optimal for the size of the institution and the student numbers that we had. Uh, and it's these challenges that motivated me to just run a survey across all universities in Africa that are using Moodle to understand um, what they are using to host Moodle and what sort of challenges and um, opportunities they experience. So in terms of the survey, there was an online questionnaire um, that I designed using Microsoft Forms uh, it was targeted mainly, as I say, to Moodle users in Africa, both universities and other institutions. Uh, it was sent specifically to Moodle administrators um, to answer the questions. 
it ran for plus minus two months, September to, sorry, August to the end of September. And um, because of the challenges of accessing these institutions that use Moodle, um, I could only receive 15 valid uh, responses um, that formed the essence of this uh, presentation. Uh, as I say, in terms of limitations, I could not access a full database of Moodle uh, users. In Africa, I did try to engage Moodle HQ, but I was not um, that successful because of privacy issues. Um, so in terms of our um, Moodle Moot Africa Association, we do have active universities that we work with that I tapped into to respond to, to the survey. So this is the spread uh, out of those 15 uh, responses that I received across these countries, Botswana, Ghana, Namibia, Nigeria, South Africa, as well as Uganda. As I did say, largely Moodle administrators were the respondents in their institutions. Um, what type of teaching and learning uh, modes do these institutions use? Uh, mainly distance, um, sorry, not distance, hybrid, which is a combination of um, distance uh, or e-learning as well as, um, you know, contact. Uh, followed obviously by the distance e-learning, which South Africa is, uh, University of South Africa is an open distance e-learning institution. The size of the institutions, I think they were largely small to medium size in terms of numbers. Um, the one to the farthest uh, in, in, in dark or gray, so obviously ourselves, University of South Africa, which is between 350,000 and 400,000, and we intend to grow that number over time. But Moodle, a stable Moodle is going to be a big um, determinant or, or, or enabler for that. In terms of usage, uh, how long these institutions have been using uh, Moodle, to a large extent, there are fairly new users between one and five years, uh, another four uh, between six and 10 years, uh, there's another 11 to 15 years, and at least one which is up to 20 years. So it's a mix of experience in terms of how they use using Moodle um, to enable their academic project. Specifically, I think not everybody uses um, Moodle for uh, teaching and learning, it looks like some uh, use it for other things, but also there's this uh, assessment as well. So this is the spread of how these institutions use, use Moodle. So interesting, uh, this is the essence of really what I, what I wanted to find out uh, from these institutions, is how they using um, the technology that they use to, to host Moodle. Um, there's a few that still host Moodle on, on site in their own data centers. Some use a private cloud, but to a large extent, uh, out of this um, uh, sample, six uh, use the public cloud. And we'll see where the spread is in terms of the public cloud. And the other question that I wanted to um, ask, or that I did ask, is, is obviously institutions, um, why did they choose to host their Moodle on the platform that they selected, uh, that they referred to? Uh, a lot of the institutions, obviously between the data center and the public cloud and the private cloud, a lot of the institutions obviously prioritize availability, the top, I would say the top three are availability, efficiency, as well as um, security. So as you can see, cost savings is not so much a big thing when uh, institutions are looking at cloud 
and we often believe that institutions are moving to cloud, those that do, because of cost savings. But the biggest thing is making sure that the system is available and is efficient. Uh, which of the following cloud technologies? Um, AWS is leading in terms of the public cloud, followed by Azure, as well as uh, Moodle, uh, um, in terms of the public clouds. And there are other, which is where the, the private clouds are scattered. So it looks like, in terms of hosting, uh, AWS is, is, is a lead, and this is um, the technology that we planning to move on to uh, in 2025. The reasons for choosing the cloud provider, you specified obviously whether it was Amazon or Microsoft, Azure. Um, the leading factor there is um, or, or yes, uh, size, size and experience, sorry. Size and experience of a cloud provider is, is a leading factor. Uh, followed, obviously, by the reputation of the cloud provider, the ease, um, ease of use of the technology. So the technology must be easy to use. The cloud platform that they choose must be easy to use and fit into their technology roadmap road as well, including, obviously, good customer service. Uh, you don't want to partner with a... Uh, an organization that does not have good customer service. Um, in terms of deployment uh, models or service models, um, a lot of the institutions are using uh, the uh, cloud as infrastructure as a service, not so much uh, platform um, and not so much software as a service. And I think it could be one that said Moodle is where software as a service is being used. Uh, when choosing to host your Moodle on cloud, um, indicate the reasons in terms of priority. So what do they prioritize? Um, the respondent said security is the first thing that they you know, prioritize. Is the cloud platform a secure platform? Uh, particularly if you look at privacy and where the data is being hosted, whether it's um, in another country or not. Availability and business continuity, uh, which ties up to the previous uh, slide, as well as efficiency. So those are the three priority uh, aspects that are important to, to the respondents. Once again, cost savings, not so much, and good governance as well. Um, how satisfied or dissatisfied are you with your cloud provider to a large extent? I think the respondents are fairly satisfied with the uh, cloud providers. And um, interesting, they're not likely to recommend their cloud providers to another institution, even though they said they are fairly happy, which is interesting. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, passives and detractors rather than promoters. And lastly, which was important to us um, as Africa, is whether these institutions would be keen to club together and form a community cloud um, to service the African universities and institutions using Moodle um, to use economies of scale, but also to use it as a platform to share knowledge, um, create solutions that are best suited to African uh, universities and institutions. And um, yeah, there was overwhelming support for that um, out of the respondents that they would be very keen to form uh, and be part of such an initiative to create a community, community cloud for African universities. Some of the few comments, I'm not going to read through them. Uh, the slides would be shared. You feel free to engage um, in the comments. But key takeaways, as we've seen, majority are using the public cloud. And I think uh, it's going to grow into the future to have more and more universities, at least in Africa, using public cloud. 
Um, availability, efficiency, and security are important um, to them. AWS seems to be a preferred cloud provider in at least African institutions. And um, good customer service size of the cloud provider and their experience in partnering with institutions is, is very important. And as we've seen, infrastructure as a service is the preferred service model for the institutions. And I think for the foreseeable future, it may remain so. And um, lastly, the, as I say, majority of the respondents would like to really see or club together to create their own cloud uh, that can meet their own needs and um, uh, encourage knowledge sharing. Thank you very much for your audience and listening. Thank you. Uh, questions? Hi. Uh, how many users users are you expecting in this uh, community cloud from all the universities? How many is this ex the expectation? Sure. It's, it's very difficult to say, but it's going to be a large um, user base because I think, if I'm not mistaken, currently Africa is a leading continent in terms of Moodle installation and use. So from that perspective, it could be a very large user base, but it's something that we will need to determine uh, in order to be able to also size it and provide the right uh, technology infra infrastructure for, for that uh, use. Do you have uh, the cost of the investment of that, uh, of building that community cloud? No, not, not yet. Yeah, not, okay. not yet. We, we're not there yet. It's something that we, now that there's an interest, we would like to, in our Moodle Mood Africa Association, that's going to be a topic for, for Thank discussion. You. Thank you. Thank you. And anyone else? Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I understand that it's a survey that you had done among these uh, universities, but uh, our experience is that uh, definitely hosting Moodle in the cloud is working for our university. We have about 11,000 students, and uh, one simple reason is that we don't have the skilled human resources to deal with uh, cybersecurity, ransomware attacks, you know, all types of things. In that sense, uh, the technical team at our university, we simply focus on uh, using Amazon Cloud, uh, Amazon Cloud uh, to host our model. It's working for us. I mean, that's our experience. And uh, for a community cloud that you talked about, bringing all Africa together, if that, if, uh, if that becomes a reality, or a major uh, universities in Africa, uh, there is no other way that you can achieve, uh, in, a, in my personal opinion, that you know you got to depend on a cloud provider. And uh, a note, uh, what I observed is that in your presentation, you were kind of not satisfied with the cloud service provider. That could be specific to that particular team or the cloud service provider. But in general, yeah, they can scale it up. They can provide a very better and very very good service. Thank you. Thank you. I guess it's a comment more than a question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any other question? One last. Yeah. Hello. H have you asked the universities who to maintain uh, the, the Moodle to all the upgrades and, and uh, uh, install plugins? Is it by Moodle partners or is it uh, done by themselves? We, we, we didn't specifically ask that question, but yes, to my knowledge, we like University of South Africa, we work with a Moodle partner. Um, some universities that have long implemented Moodle uh, like uh, the Open University of Tanzania, they so, sort of self-sufficient. They, they're doing it on their own. More than 10 years, they've got a, a very solid team that works on Moodle. Uh, they don't have a partner, per se. So it's, it's different across the universities. Thank you.
Uh, anybody else? Just one last time, one more question. We still have a minute. Okay. Maybe a, a, a counter comment and not a question. Uh, based on the survey that has been done to say, yes, we are reliant on the cloud service providers. And in terms of the survey, we're looking into the African content into how can we improve our African um, uh, cloud and other technologies as well. And of course, an investment case would add into the implementation plan and the timelines. And it's high time that continents needs to uh, have confidence in themselves um, into, you know, starting from somewhere and building into your capabilities in ensuring that your own people are aligned and have confidence in you to be able to improve in the technology. Thanks. Thank you.